bait of the day, a KVD Finesse 3 8 ounce spinner bait. This is a very versatile spinner bait, and we're going to discuss this in further detail. You ready to run a gun? It's time to blast off. Let's go. Hey guys, Todd here with you. Welcome back to Passing 101. Kind of a simplified approach to spinner baits, if, if you want to call it that. Um, I've chosen one spinner bait, and that's the KVD 3 8 ounce finesse. The reason is they all have this number two nickel blade in the front. They have a 32 wire on them. They've got a very basic type head. That one I've actually painted to match the skirt. And I always keep a set of blades. They're all Hildebrands, but I keep a set of blades to put on these spinner baits. And like I said, they're all three eights. All these different models are all these are all three eights. But I've modified uh, a bunch of them just just in colors. You know, I'll take the heads and I'll change the colors of the heads and clear coat them in a chip proof finish, and that way I can get you know different other kind of spinner baits out of them. But overall. I use that chartreuse and blue head that you can get, the chartreuse and the white which comes on the gizzard jab. Those are my main three colors. Now you're thinking, what's so simplified about this? Well I'm using one spinner bait, a 3 8 ounce. All of them have the nickel blade in the front. All I'm doing is changing the blades in the back. And I keep a bag. It's got uh, it has some short has, has a short true's wool leaf in there, number five and number five white. Uh, the rest of them are all Hildebrands. I've got different size willow blades in there, different size Colorados, Indianas. When do you use these? Well, if I want a spinner bait to stay down, but I still want to feel it, I'll throw one that's got an Indiana blade. And the reason I throw the Indiana blade, you guys are familiar with these. Indiana blade is in between a Colorado, which is that, and a willow leaf, which is that. So you guys are familiar with that, all right? I, I know that. Trailers, I don't always throw trailers on these things, but I do always use the skirts that have the tails on them. And I also skip cut these. Um, you've seen the pair of scissors I have that actually has the teeth in it that you can get at Walmart in a kit. And I use these to actually skip cut them so they look chewed up. See that? They're not all the same length in both of them. And all I do is take the tail, clip it about a half inch up, I turn the skirt upside down, hold it, and I'll clip it about a half inch up. So that way, uh, like here's a, here's a Terminator skirt that I did that too. It actually makes that skirt look a lot better. Now I have basically two different styles of spinner baits here. One is spinner baits that I keep down. The other are shad. That's basically how I do it. I mean, can I even narrow this down to where I only have two or three spinner baits? Of course. Now the cool thing about these is I get replaceable skirts so that if you want to change the colors, you can keep like one spinner bait, have two or three different skirts, and you just change the skirt out. You can do that, it saves your room carrying spinner baits. I just go ahead and just put them together as they are. And like I said, I can always change the blade in the back to match the deal. This is one of those Picasso skirts. But it's, uh, you see, I've got that skip cut too. So it has a, a better flow to it. It looks more chewed up. And, you know, shad patterns, I keep them kind of simple. I keep one of everything. That's basically how I do it. You know, if I want to burn one, this is a KVD burner. But still a 3 8 still has. Um, these have a 032. I think this is this is a 32, but it has a has the smaller willow leaves on it. 
And this is a particular spinner bait that I would basically burn or fish deep and kind of keep it going. And I got a little bit of everything on that little shad, little chartreuse. This I would normally would not use a tail, just a trailer hook. And you always want to keep you know packs of trailer hooks with you. Um, but for shads, you know I have you know a few basic type stuff. I don't like the KVD blade that comes on the back of these things. It's a very dull blade. I don't like them. Um, but you know your typical shad patterns of your everyday type deal. And you can see there's what about five right there that have different blade combinations on them. You know you got a smaller double Colorado right there, which is a good flutter style bait. You know, and everything. You know, it, I said this, that's that's a shad pattern, but these are your basic. Here's another one. Your basic bulldog type shad pattern. So this one does not have a tail because this one I could actually put a trailer on. And that's probably what I would do. As a matter of fact, you can actually really alter the color of that by putting a chartreuse trailer on there. Look, that whole entire spinnerbait just turned chartreuse. That's what's cool about silicone. Because I could put that on there, and you see that bait just turned completely chartreuse. So that's actually kind of cool. Just the way you that way you can manipulate them. Just like uh, you know, I got this Picasso right here, which is kind of like a citrus shad color. But if I put this trailer in here. It really makes the chartreuse pop out in that skirt. You see that? So that's something to take, take into consideration. And then for really dirty water, I got the, this is the standard chartreuse that comes with this, with the Strike Kings. And I like it because it's got reflection in it. And I can change this back blade to whatever I want. And if I really want to thicken that skirt up, I can put a trailer on that, extend the bait, make it a little bit thicker even though you've got these trailers back here. doesn't matter. A typical trailer would do just fine. Now, as far as, as I said, there's shad and there's, there's baits I fish on the bottom or flutter through cover. Um, and I just keep those in just a few simple colors and they're basically sunfish and crawfish colors. It's really what they are. You know, here's a bluegill, standard bluegill pattern that, uh, you know, I painted the head blue because you know most of your bluegill are blue and copper Indiana blade. The reason I use copper is because it's not super flashy. You'll still get the thump, you'll still get the vibration, you'll still get the flutter, but copper is kind of a natural color when it comes to crawfish, bluegill, sunfish, perch, things like that. So that's why I use the copper on that one. Another I use copper on is just a bullhead type of bluegill. It's got a lot of purple in the skirt so I painted the head purple and this also has a copper blade. Same size blade. The thing about these I can still throw a big four and a half uh, Hildebrand. Hildebrand's run bigger than other blades but I can get away with this big four and a half back here because it doesn't pull a lot. It allows it to, to, to sink better. Another one I use is just a standard perch color. This is the Terminator skirt. Now this one I have a gold blade because this one now I can actually fish in a little bit shallower water, kind of flutter it through and get a little bit more shine with that gold blade. Now the cool thing about this, not only did I paint an orange pearl to match that, but you could take an orange trailer and put it right in that dude and it makes the orange pop out in that skirt. Look at that. Look how much it pops it out. So you can keep that kind of natural. You know, I've seen orange on, on perch. So that's, you know, that would be a really good trailer to do. These just come off eBay. Uh, another pattern that I use as well. It's also good for night fishing, but really good for low lights. And this is also really good for summertime. June bug. Again, I painted that head to match June bug. That's basically just uh, purple pearl over black. And that's how I did that. Lightly sand the head so it'll hold paint. It's just, just acrylics all I use. And this one's fully nickel. Same size blade, same Indiana, but it's nickel. Because like I said, yeah, this is 
summertime type color if you're fishing on the bottom. Um, I want it to be seen, so I you know, have that nickel blade um, that has the most flash. That's the only reason I use that, and I would always, almost, almost always fish this with a trailer, unless I'm really, or if I'm fishing really clear water, I probably would not use a trailer. But for that one, I would. Now, what kind of trailers would I use? Well, you've got Zoom Super Chunk, which is good to really bulk that thing up, and you've also got the Zoom Swimming Chunks. And I'll show you what these look like. Here's another pattern I have in a watermelon and chartreuse type color. Again, it's a copper blade. I panned the head to match. And this one actually has a super chunk on it. So if I wanted to fish this on the bottom, I could pump it up and let it fall like a crawfish. I could just slow roll it on the bottom bump through cover and rocks and stuff and just give that simple crawfish pattern. It doesn't have a lot of movement. You know, these things don't kick behind them. I don't want a lot of action back there. I just want just a very basic type of action. And again, I still have the trailer on the back of the skirt. It's just that you're just adding a chunk just to kind of bulk it up a little bit. And another way, here's the Okeechobee crawl. Then again, I pan that over. If y'all want to know what that color is, it's basically green pumpkin with blue pearl on top of it. That's how I did the head. Blue pearl over green pumpkin. Again, copper blade. But this has the Okeechobee crawl swimming chunk on the back of it. Now this doesn't give it a lot of bulk. As a matter of fact, the skirt almost gets in the way of the trailer. But all I'm doing is adding a little bit of action to it. And this is probably my favorite color combo, whether it's this or whether it's a uh, super chunk. I got a super chunk in, in, in the Okeechobee crawl. But this is also good for if they're not hitting a, a shad pattern, they'll hit that. But I fish it down. You know, I flutter it through cover, let it bounce off limbs, let it bounce off rocks. That's what That to me is what that's for. And that's why I use an Indiana blade on a 3 8 because I can keep it down. And it flutters a whole lot better than, say, a willow, a willow blade. You know, your typical tandem willow, which is a Colorado and a willow blade, you can you can fish it slow, kind of flutter it back to you, but it doesn't work as well as an, as an Indiana blade, or does it work as well as a Colorado blade. So if you want to stay down, I, I stick with the Indiana. If you, that, that's probably my favorite fluttering blade. And by flutter, I mean, you know, if you're fishing a steep bank, you throw the thing up on, right up on the bank and you kind of engage your reel and you slowly crank it and you just kind of watch your spinner bait just drift out of sight but it's still moving towards you. That's called fluttering. And to me, that Indiana blade works the best. But these 3 8 ounce spinner baits, you know, don't, don't think that they're not a heavy bait and don't think they're not a light bait. They're a great intermediate all around weight. 3 8 work great for everything. If you need to, this is Loctite gel super glue. I like the gel the best and I use that in case you need to keep a trailer on there. Um, but trailers, you know, split tail trailers. You know, you've got swimming chunks, you've got uh, super chunks, you've got some guys even use swim baits on the back of these things. I don't but I can definitely see a reason for doing it. But that's basically just what I have guys. It's a few different variants of shad patterns but they're all the exact same spinnerbait. They're all KVD finesse. All of them are. And like I said, they all have, except for the, the burner right here, they all have that nickel Colorado blade, number two. And that, to me, is the perfect combination. Here's a little smaller four, size four Hilda Brown back at thing. This is a really good bait for fluttering, but yet you're not creating a lot of flash. You're also not creating a lot of thump. So that's a good color for that. And there's a little bit of chartreuse in that because the rest is for off-colored water. I would not throw that in clear water. Clear water. Again, I have a KVD. I have a very clear holographic skirt that I've actually cut short. With the, tra the trailer is actually cut short. I really skip cut this skirt to where it's very short. 
and you can't find these anymore, but this is an old Bash Pro Shops XPS blade and a three. So I've got a number two and a number three willow leaf. This is for really clear water if I really want to fish a bait fast. You know, I know I've got this one right here, but this is standard. You know, that's a standard size skirt. Let's look, look, look the difference in size of those two right there. And it's the exact same spinner bait. Just that I just cut this one a lot shorter. And because of the white and the chartreuse, it makes this side look a lot bigger than this side. But if I put them side by side, you can definitely see a difference in the skirts. One of each. I don't I don't carry four, you know, if I'm going to fish super clear water, I'm not going to carry four or five different spinner baits to do that with. I'm going to carry the one. If I want to burn it really fast, I got one. Everything else, I just kind of interchange them however I want to do them. I got one straight chartreuse for really dirty water. I got another one right here I can use in dirty water that I can actually use a trailer with and change the outlook on that. You know, again, the flutter baits, more more dark natural colors. Um, you know, these three right here are my basic perch and bluegill colors. But if I had, but as far as all these different flutter baits, if I had to choose, give me the Okeechobee and give me the June bug. You know, the rest can just sit in the box. But that's for you to decide. You know, do you, you know some of you guys have no confidence in stuff like this, and that's okay. You know, some of you guys like to throw just a pure white spinner bait. Nothing wrong with that either. But this is just a simplified type deal. I know it doesn't seem like it, but remember, this is just one spinner bait. Now, all I'm doing is just changing the skirts around, changing the back blades around. That's all I'm doing. And again, I keep a little small bag with a little handful, you know, a little handful of blades there. Not, not very much. And you know, again, I keep you know different kind of trailers, you know, watermelon, you know, stuff like that. Uh, super chunks in case you want to really bulk up that skirt. You know, with the June bug here, I've got June bug and a swimming chunk and a June bug and a super chunk. So I can kind of go in between them. Same thing for that one. That exact same thing for this. So just kind of wanted to run that by you guys. Everybody has their own favorite spinner bait. I'm not saying these are my favorite, but these are just ones that I can really, you know, they're made like I would make them. They're very light wire. Very small Colorado in the front, just to add balance. So you can throw bigger blades in the back, like a four and a half, or even a number five. Big Colorado back here. That front blade helps to stabilize it. No single blades in this selection at all. These are all tandems. Tandem means you got a Colorado blade in the front. That's basically what tandem means. Whatever blade you have in the back. Well, unless you have a double Colorado. <laughs> Otherwise, you have Tandem Willow, Tandem Indiana. But that's that's my little spiel there, guys. Is uh, you know keeping different trailers white. You know uh, anything that you want to throw you know, blades. I keep gold, silver, and copper. And like I said, I keep a Chartreuse Number no. Five Willow Leaf and a white. You can't see it, but uh, there's a white Willow Leaf in there too. In case I want to take this gizzard shad and take this blade off the back, put white on it, now I can throw it on a rainy day. And they can see that white blade. Or if I'm fishing real stained water on a cloudy day, I can take this number five Colorado off of here and put on the big number five chartreuse blade. And really make that blade bright. Or make this whole entire spinnerbait bright. Put a big chartreuse trailer on there too. Bulk up the size of the spinnerbait. So there's different things you can do with these. It's just your imagination. I mean, you can take a simple spinner bait like this right here, and you can put a white trailer on here and really make the white pop out in that bait. You can easily do that. You can take this orange trailer right here. If you really want to twist things around, you can put this orange trailer on the back of that one right there and change the whole outlook of that spinner bait. It's up to you. But they're all skip cut. They're all trimmed to kind of flutter. And that's pretty much all I got, guys. I just kind of wanted to show you a simplified way of how I would do, uh, say, a modern day spinner bait. You know, spinner baits that you can buy right now. And that's basically what I did KVD spinner bait. Uh, that's just my choice. That's just what I've been playing around with. And the thing that really sells me on these over a lot of other spinner baits, you see what this top wire is right here? Compared to the hook, it actually comes over the point of that hook. 
by almost a half inch. To me, that's a very weedless spinnerbait. And that's another reason I choose KVD. Plus, with it being 032, I can open the blade, make it run a lot slower. I can also squeeze the blade together, make it run faster. Yeah, different ways of doing that. You close it up if you want to run fast, you open it up if you want to run really, really slow. That way they won't teeter on you. But that's all I have for that, guys. Just wanted to run that by you, kind of give you an idea what goes through my mind. <laughs> Besides echoes and static, uh, radio static. But other than that, that's all I got for today, guys. So until next time, may the Father bless you and keep in Yeshua's name. As always, fish on. <laughs>